Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Matthias. That's Daniel. We are both two yeah, more or less freelance software engineers working a lot with cloud native and JavaScript and basically in the browser. Um, so it would probably be good if Matt was talking now and we were after because <laughs> now we need to go uh, into the like high level information about what cloud native is. Otherwise, that would be his part. Um, so cloud native geospatial basically means that you have very large data sets uh, and you want to store them, usually with like set up server, web map, web map service or something like that. Um, but in this case, you would store them in a like different way, um, specific way that makes it cloud native. And you can then place it easily uh, on object storage, for example. And then only download the parts that you actually need. That is, in the end, faster and cheaper, both in costs and in time. Um, and as such, you usually don't need a server, which is this so-called serverless uh, design. So you probably, for, for example, if you have a GeoTIFF on, online that is cloud optimized, you wouldn't need a tile server like Tile Tiler or so. Um, and what we're going to do today is to try to convince you that you may go this new route, um, making stuff cloud native, uh, and that you can work actually with all the data available uh, usually in the browser as well. You don't need a server that preprocesses the data for you and makes it available for the browser uh, like it was in the past. Uh, we are focusing on JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, and if there's nothing available in that natively, then uh, we also look into a WebAssembly. Um, we ignore Node.js for now because that's again a server side. Um, so, quick overview of what we were we are tackling here. So that's uh, first the part of discovery, which we heard before from Pete, is stack. Um, then we're having two categories of types of data, which is raster or array-based data, which is uh, COGS, cloud-optimized geotiffs, PM tiles, cloud-optimized tar, and ZAR. And then for vector data, we have uh, GeoParquet, flat geobuff, and uh, cloud-optimized point clouds. And for uh, cloud-native processing, we have OpenEO. Um, short disclaimer, we're working on a couple of projects that we will mention in this uh, slide, uh, and all the ones that have a star there, uh, that is maintained by us, so just as a disclaimer that <laughs> we might be biased in some of them. <laughs> um, so we heard about Stack, um, and Stack in the browser very much feels native because it's just JSON, right? JSON uh, is coming from the JavaScript ecosystem, basically. Um, so reading it is like very easy. You don't usually need a really a library for it. Um, so there is no general purpose library like PyStack. And you can use uh, Stack with something else than Python, of course. Pete was mostly uh, focusing on Python, I think. Um, so that's good. And you have also like the Stack item is a GeoJSON, so you can uh, use every tooling that is around for GeoJSON processing. Um, there's a couple of uh, tools that help you to actually um, work with the data in more advanced ways. For example, um, if you have like old stack files and want to migrate into the latest version, there's stack migrate, which just takes your stack item and collections and migrates into the latest version. Uh, there's stack fields, which converts stack metadata to HTML. Uh, and all that is then used again in more um, high level uh, implementations, like for example, stack browser, open your view components and stack layer. Uh, which all are for visualization, stack browser you've seen before in the, in the um, stack talk, which is for uh, basically a UI for, for stack, um, where you can browse through all the catalogs and APIs, search in them, uh, visualize them, etc. cetera. Um, there is a small utility class in stack browser as well that we might want to spin out at some point, um, just with help of helper functions um, to get an asset specifically or link or whatever. Um, and then Stack Layer is a leaflet plugin basically to visualize stack items and collections, which also includes COG uh, visualization if there is a cloud optimized uh, uh, geotiff in the, in the yeah, item basically in the assets. And View Components is basically a web component uh, library for also for stack items and, and collections originating in OpenEO. Uh, so you can load that basically, and then you have HTML tags available without like re needing to write JavaScript where you can input your data and show it just in the browser without any like uh, coding involved, except for HTML, of course. So this slide is on COGS. Uh, COGS stands for Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. 
and a cloud-optimized GeoTIFF is a TIFF image with geospatial metadata, and it supports partial read requests, which mean you can grab just part of that image. Um, you don't have to read, like, the whole thing. So there's a lot of different options when it comes to reading, visualizing, and analyzing. We're not going to have time to go over every one, but I have a question for the audience. So uh, raise your hand if you work with cloud-optimized geotiffs. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, no, no, no. Keep them up. Keep them up. Okay. Now, uh, for anyone who didn't raise your hand, look around, and if you have any questions, you find one of those people <laughs> and you ask them. Now or at the icebreaker. Um, so, uh, yeah, lots of options. There's low-level options like GeotiffJS, which is an amazing library. Um, Fabian Schindler uh, is the, the lead maintainer there, um, and EOX has supported it. Thank you. Uh, and a lot of the, the reading libraries depend on that. There's also uh, libraries that will try to get GDAL into the browser. Uh, those come with a lot of features, uh, but you also have to pay for the, the large file size. Um, but, you know, as computers get faster, it's not, it's not unreasonable to, to check those out. Um, visualizing, uh, there's a lot of different options there from sort of more memory-optimized CPU-based visualization to real high-powered uh, GPU-enabled uh, visualization. Uh, and then there's also analysis uh, options, too. Um, what I forgot to say is that um, there are a lot of names in here and we listed a lot of them. Some have links. Um, you can go to phosphog.lutena.de and then the slides are there. You can just click the links and Google the names uh, if there are no link, uh, just so that you don't need to write all these like lists down. <laughs> um, then the next cloud optimized format is cloud optimized pl point clouds. Um, there is a library available uh, that is called CopyCJS, which is based on TypeScript and then has some kind of reader in the background, which is WebAssembly. Um, unfortunately for that, um, that is still very limited in the documentation, so there's just one example available, no API documentation. Um, so you need to be prepared to dig into the CopyCJ code or contract the company that is actually maintaining it. Um, so there's a bit more work to be done, um, but there's also an online viewer that you can use um, to actually uh, test it out. Um, ZAR. Uh, so ZAR uh, is a format for chunked, or in other words, tiled, compressed, multi-dimensional arrays. You might be wondering what's the difference with COGS. Uh, well, ZAR will have uh, more than one dimension. Um, the, the tiles will be uh, kind of large, so it's a good fit for climate data. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's sort of a newer format. Uh, GeoTIFFs have existed since the 80s um, and Cloud Optimize um, more recent. Uh, so there's still, um, with some of these newer cutting edge formats, there's more work to be done. Um, but there's a really awesome uh, step forward that Carbon Plan did uh, with visualizing uh, ZAR data um, on, on the web, and there's also uh, a couple different uh, efforts in JavaScript. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to, to tracking this uh, and seeing uh, where it goes. Um, then another one that has recently been published as a specification and still is not really finished, but it's, it's there and it seems to be the step forward for vector is GeoParquet. Um, there is nothing specifically implemented yet for GeoParquet in JavaScript, um, but there is, like, there, there are two implementations, but GeoParquet or Parquet itself is pretty um, difficult, so they have been abandoned um, in favor of a WebAssembly based implementation, um, which is Parquet Wasm. Um, and that is also used in Lotus GL, so if you're like a Jack, Jack GL user um, or want to go into any like uh, GL based, WebGL based, um, yeah, visualization, then Lotus GL might be the place to go, as it's also available for a couple of other um, formats that we're talking about, like uh, flat geo above. Uh, flat uh, geo buff is an amazing new uh, format uh, by, and I apologize, uh, I'm an American. I actually live in the South, so you can imagine the, the accent. Um, it, 
Bjorn Hartel, apologies on the pronunciation, but um, really it's find that guy here on GitHub and, and ask him about it. Uh, it's been getting a lot of um, support uh, across the community on, on a bunch of different projects, um, most importantly uh, GDAO, um, which uh, means you can really use it everywhere. Uh, and uh, reading is fully supported in uh, JavaScript. Um, there's, there's a lot of different work going on in visualization and reading, but sort of the main takeaway would be uh, you can use it to replace a shapefile and it's cloud optimized. Then we have cloud optimized single file map tile archives, um, which is basically a replacement for your tile server in the background that can be used on uh, object storage. Uh, there are two of them, that one is PM tiles, the other one is Kotar, which is Cloud Optimized Tower, which sounds rather weird, but <laughs> is a thing. Um, yeah, Kotar, there is a general purpose reader for Kotar, um, and PM tiles has an implementation for both Leaflet and MapLibre. Um, and OpenEO is the last part, which is about processing. Uh, that is a specification to like, unify all the uh, processing platforms out there with a specification. Um, there's a JavaScript client available. There are uh, visualization components and a web uh, component for editing in a non-coding uh, way, basically. Um, so there you go. And now the probably Im most important or interesting slide is in the background now, um, the conclusion. Like, we have listed now all the um, like formats that we have available um, and give some hints about whether um, a library is available, whether a visualization mapping tool is tooling is available, and whether you would recommend it in the browser and uh, how good the documentation and examples are. Um, so you see um, there is a couple of really JavaScript implementations as libraries available, and uh, if there's not, there is a, a WebAssembly um, alternative available, so you can all use all these cloud optimized um, formats in the browser. Um, for most of them, there is also visualization available, except um, at least in, in open source uh, way, not for cloud optimized pound clouds, Kotar and Geoparque right now. Um, and for Zara, it depends very much on the use case. Um, and what we would recommend in the browser right now without any doubts is uh, cloud optimized GeoTiffs, Kotar, PM tiles, and Stack. Um, and for the others, it depends usually on the use case. Like for example, um, cloud optimized pound clouds. Uh, as I said, the documentation is lacking, so there's something that you still need to, like you would need to dig into the actual library and understand it deeply, otherwise it's hard to implement it and get it running. Um, for ge flat geo buff, they have, for example, the issue that the, if the files get large, you don't have overviews like in Cox, so you um, can't like get a broader, um, more generalized uh, instance of your vector data. Um, for GeoParquet, it is implemented, but the Geo part is missing in the library, so there is no, no special handling. You would still need to add the Geo part to the, to the Parquet Vasm library. Um, for OpenEO, it depends on the use case. And for Zara, there is an issue that, um, depending on how it's stored, the chunk size is an issue. Like for some uh, Zara files, chunks are very large, so it doesn't really, uh, it's handled well in the browser. But if you can manage to optimize that to chunk size that are uh, small enough for the browser, then it uh, actually works pretty well. Um, yeah, that's it, I think, right? <laughs>